Hello everybody, Disciple here once again with Overwatch Curios. Now if you guys didn't see the last time we did Grandmaster Map Tricks, that's where we sit down and explore some of the places on the map that you're not exactly supposed to be able to get to, or at least not without a lot of difficulty, but they're places that can either completely speed up your trip across the map or surprise your opponents to get the upper hand. Now to find these out, I sat down with Handsome Bearded Man, Grandmaster Overwatch player on several accounts, and professional coach Rawful Gator to figure out exactly where you can go to completely get the edge over your opponents. Now before we get started, I want to share with you guys something really cool that we came up with alongside an artist named Abbott Austin, and this is a shirt design that I wanted myself, and then after we made, figured, hey, maybe we'll try selling so you guys can represent your favorite game, and we're going to come up with a few more designs just so we can kind of share our love for the game. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and check that out. It is for sale down below. Anyway, let's get right into it. So this first trick is probably my favorite of them all, and it's just a ridiculously good sniping location for Widowmaker. Normally a peak droop like this would just push you off because they're all slanted, but if you hit just the right spot, you can actually stay up top here and snipe down onto point A from up above. But you might be wondering, well this doesn't seem that strong, I mean someone can just shoot at you. But then you go into third person and you see just why it is so powerful. Your body is actually covered mostly entirely by snow and it actually looks like you clip through the roof a bit. And you can just snipe down on your opponents from up above. It's very difficult to stay up there for long because eventually you slide up. But while you're up there, it seems ridiculously powerful. And so this is probably the number one spot that you want to try for as Widowmaker if you're going to be playing her on this map. Now in most maps there are a lot of ways to use vertical movement to your advantage, especially for characters that aren't normally expected to be able to do it. Someone like Farah or Junkrat you expect to be able to get to pretty much any location they want, but someone like Ana can use this invisible step on the wall that's right here next to this entrance and set up on defense. You could come all the way here and you know throw out your bomb or even just send a sleep dart right at the start of the match and then run back to the safety of your team, but no one's really going to expect an Ana to be there unless you've gotten a May boost or something of that sort. Even a highly mobile character like Tracer, who's intended for horizontal mobility and not vertical mobility, can use this to climb to a high point of the map and then blink around between them, surprising your enemies by coming from somewhere you're really not supposed to be, at least in their minds. Now some of these may not be the easiest or the fastest methods, but the fact that no one's expecting you to come from there is what gives you this element of surprise to potentially take your enemies out with a nice bomb, or even just get a flank on the immobile supports to take them out before your team really gets into the fight. Now you guys probably know about this left side flank on the first point of Volskaya, and it's definitely very easy to do with characters like Farah or D.Va, but you can also do it with characters like Sombra, Widowmaker, Winston, and Lucio. Some of them require a little bit of timing and positioning, and you might actually die a few times while you first try it, but once you learn it, it's a very valuable technique to potentially take your enemies by surprise in a huge group, since they may not even see you taking this route, and then you can pop right onto the point. There are a lot of places on the map that you can get to that are advantageous shooting positions for Soldier 76 that you can only reach using a helix rocket jump, and there are actually a lot that we didn't even know about at the time of recording the first video because of a technique that we weren't using at the time that we've now learned about. To clarify, a helix rocket jump is when you jump and use your alternate fire at around the same time, and your alternate fire actually propels you farther into the air. Now the most efficient way to helix jump is actually to jump about 40 milliseconds after you use your helix rocket, but it's really hard to time and really easy to mess up, so unless you really need the extra distance, I recommend jumping first and then using your alternate fire. But one thing that we learned is that you can also sprint in midair after you helix jump, and it'll actually propel you even farther than before, allowing you to reach some really cool locations. We talked about this in our Grandmaster Trick Soldier 76 video, but the real reason you want to flank and get behind your opponent as soldier is because your ultimate is really so easily countered by shields or frontliners like Roadhog that can just hook you out of it, and so being able to surprise people and pick off the squishier characters that try to stick to the back line first gives you some really cool advantages over your opponents and especially if you set it up with someone like Ana, can just completely wipe teams by yourself and set up some really cool plays of the game. 
Another really potent combo that I didn't mention in the last video because I didn't even know about it at the time is Soldier 76's ability to work with Lucio's speed boost to reach even more places he couldn't normally. And if at this point you're saying, oh, that takes way too much coordination to work with someone else to use their speed boost to reach this place, actual Grandmaster players like Aimbot Calvin do this in real games. Lucio, can you be on speed real quick? They're still a little bit of broken. Thank you. Hog's looking for Hug. Hog's left above us. I'm a dead, I'm a dead, I'm a dead. Junk dead. I'm on fire. Being able to use all of these tricks efficiently is definitely tough, but once you do practice them on your own in custom games or even with friends, then you can know when in your own matches to use them yourself to give yourself even just a little bit of an advantage over your opponents. And if you've ever been curious when watching a Grandmaster player like Poke stream when you're obviously way better than they are, just know that while you're running everywhere like a normie, they're using some unique methods to jump to places that they could also get to by running but they can do it with a lot more style. We don't know exactly if Blizzard does award style points in your skill rating, but better safe than silver. There are so many ways to apply these map tricks in a wide variety of situations as long as you can identify them. If there's a Bastion or a Torbjorn turret somewhere up here on Hollywood that's giving you troubles, knowing that you can swap to Sombra and Stealth and throw your beacon at just the right angle to get behind it is absolutely huge and one of the biggest issues that I see from lower ranked players is just the general inability to adapt and throwing themselves again and again at the same problematic hero or composition without knowing exactly how you can tackle. Sure, at times going to these weird ass locations does leave you a little bit vulnerable, but that's why you should know exactly when you should or shouldn't use them, and when, if there is a problematic enemy hero or defensive setup, you have these tools in your back pocket to get to places they just weren't exactly expecting. Now my favorite use for these tips and tricks is definitely to disrupt an enemy defensive player like Widowmaker or Bastion. Most of the times they rely on these high perches to be safe from characters like Soldier 76 and Tracer that can actually destroy them in a close up 1 versus 1, but that generally just can't reach them on their own level. If you're able to jump up behind someone like Widowmaker, then you can dispatch over really quickly and secure an advantage for your team very very easily. Now, if you're looking for the element of surprise, then using these almost invisible or hidden pixels or ledges to be able to perch your character on top of and shoot someone from where they weren't expecting it can definitely give you a drop, and even if you can't stay up there indefinitely since you are exposed, grabbing a quick kill and then piecing out is definitely a way to buy yourself a little bit of extra time. And if you guys are having trouble seeing all the strategic implementations of being able to maneuver around in unique ways in a ranked match, just know that it looks really fucking cool and it'll really help you attract a girl or a guy. You guys can trust me on this, I totally have a girlfriend, she just goes to a different school. If you guys are familiar with the professional or competitive scenes at all, however, you'll actually know that maneuvering around the front part of Hollywood is actually very important now that spawn camping has become a very potent strategy for the defense. They'll set up very, very close, and since there are really so few ways to get out of your base, it's very effective for keeping you down before you can even get close to the point. So knowing how exactly you can get around them, or even better, how to set up as the spawn camping defense can be really huge to success on this map. Map. Knowing all about your character's movement abilities, and even more importantly their limitations, is incredibly important when it comes to playing and mastering Overwatch, and it's one of the things that these Grandmaster players do that someone down in Bronze or Silver or even up to Diamond don't necessarily know how to do. There are obviously a lot of reasons when it comes down to aim or team communication or hero selection, but knowing exactly how to move and abuse the map is incredibly important, and it's one of the tricks that I can teach you guys pretty easily through a few videos. I really love making these types of videos since even if not all the locations are always the most useful or the most pragmatic, a lot of them are actually really cool and like the Widowmaker sniping spot on Volskaya can be hugely useful when it comes to your games. 
A lot of the times you're just cutting out a little bit of extra travel time, but sometimes you can really use that to chase down an enemy and get that kill to secure the point, whether it's a Mercy that's about to res the team, or maybe a Symmetra that's trying to place her teleporter down in a safe spot. If there are any cool map tricks or techniques that you guys know of that haven't been in these videos so far, I'd really love to know about them so I can give you guys all of the coolest insight that I possibly can. Again, I'd really love to thank Rafflegator from Team Fanatic and Hexo from Toronto Esports for helping me out in making this video since it really wouldn't be possible without the insight from all of my friends in the Grandmaster and competitive scenes. I'm working as hard as I can to get you guys as many tips and tricks from them as possible so you guys can hopefully improve your game just a little bit every time. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. It's seriously been awesome to make this channel what it is today. We started it just over four months ago and it's already almost to 100,000 subscribers, so I'd really like to thank you guys for making that possible. If you want to continue supporting us, you can always subscribe, like the video, or even grab one of the shirts from the link down below. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace!